What's up, Snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpent Daily. And today, for this special weekend edition, we're going to be going and taking a look at the blood gene in boas and see some of the combos that I have and what I think makes the, the blood gene so special. Blood, you know, infuses the boa with more red. Boas have kind of red already in there, but the blood gene is a recessive gene. You need two copies of it, and you get a tremendous amount of red infusion in there. You also get a lot of blacks and darkness in there. So it's a, it, that blackness, however, hides a lot of the red. That's why when you add the hypogene or you, had, or you add albino, whether it be T-positive or T-negative, you create more reds in these snakes. And that's what makes them so amazing. So the blood chain has a lot of potential of unlocking a lot of hidden red in, in, all, the, in all the boas combos. It's just a matter of which combos you want to put them to. And this, there's an innumerable amount of them. This, it's an infinite amount. Sometimes, I haven't seen a snake that's too red yet, put it that way. I've seen some pretty damn red ones, and I'm going to show you some really red ones. But I haven't seen one that I've said, oh, there's just too much red in there. You know, it's just, I, 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 I got to dumb it down a little bit. So blood only makes things better. And that's the, that, that's the take home message. Let's take a look and see some of my blood combos. <laughs> Here's a really nice male blood that I produced. This is a blood parahet. Parahet means that it's either sharp albino, it's het for sharp, sharp albino, or it's het for bow woman caramel T positive. Um, and it's all, this is also het for anery 2 or aneurysmic uh, type 2, which is the, uh, the Central American version of it. Uh, a lot of potential with this boy. You can produce potentially paradigm bloods. You can produce possibly sharp albino bloods. The great thing is that he's visual. He's over a year old, he's about a year and a half old now, so he's probably pretty close to being, he might even breed this season, if you're lucky. I would breed him to anything blood, just because he's, he's a really nice looking blood. He's got some dark, dark reds in him. He's still uh, left over, I'm surprised he's still here. And I have his brother here too, who's even a little, well, he's about the same. They look, they look pretty similar. I wish there was a way to decipher whether you, the thing was het for T positive or het for sharp albino, but you can't really. You gotta, it's a, it's a crapshoot. They're both really nice looking bloods though, these guys. It just shows you blood looks different when it's combined with other genes, even when they're in the head form. Here's another really nice blood. Um, this is a, a visual blood that's 66% het for Gilbert T positive. That's, and it's also 66% het for Leopard. And I think it's gonna prove out for Leopard. It's got some nice little bow tie saddles there, but it's very light. And that's because there's some Hog Island blood in here. Um, along, and Chris Gilbert was uh, producing these, or not this one, but when he produced their parents, he had some Hog Island blood in there. And Hog Islands, if you've seen those localities, they're really light. So they lighten up. So the bloods that you get from those tend to be a little lighter uh, than the bloods you would get from a non-Hog Island type snake. So, these guys all ate yesterday, so I'm trying not to disturb too many people, too many people, too many snakes. But pretty cool. All right, here is a, um, this is uh, another snake that's from that same litter with the Gilbert T positive. And this is actually a blood that's actually visual T positive too, so it's a blood T positive, and we call that an El Diablo, and it's also 66% height for left, so really nice looking melon. You can see it much lighter, right? You put that, that, T, that T positive gene will remove some darkness, but not all of it. Like a T negative would make this, you know, you'd see no blacks. The T positive, however, removes some of it. And so we get a really nice looking, beautiful looking red looking male. Hopefully he won't bite me here. He just went eight. And look at that belly, really nice. A lot of reds in here. So he's my hold back actually. And I hope he proves out to be that leopard. You know, he's got the bow tie saddle, so it's possible. Gorgeous snake, beautiful little head spear. This blood gene is just tremendous. Here is a hypo blood that I produced in 2018. She's gonna breed for the first time this year. She's nice and beefy. And you can see, look at my hand. She's not a big snake at all. You know, this, these bloods, these, the pure bloods are 
really dwarf boas. And the hypo really, I mean, this snake for an adult has a lot of red still in her. When she was born, she was fire engine red, this thing. And she's actually probably, she's, I think, 66% head anery too as well. But I'm going to be breeding her to this arabesque blood. Now, arabesque creates this wacky, weird pattern. I really like arabesque. I don't know why I haven't gotten more arabesques in my collection. I, I, this year I bought a couple of them just because I love it so much. It looks like, uh, it almost reminds me of clown in, in ball pythons. It looks like fake like someone painted it on there, but the, the pattern, it's a pattern, you know, more, more so than a color. This is a visual blood too. So this blood arabesque is going to breed to this, this hypo blood and we're going to get hypo arabesque bloods, you know, and that's what I'm shooting for here. So hope that he's a little young, this, this arabesque. I don't know if he's going to go this year. I'm taking a chance only because I really, really want to get this arabesque blood. Uh, with the hypo gene, I think it's going to make it even better. So we'll see if they go. Hopefully this arabesque is not hit <laughs> an anery too. I don't want any anery twos and so I want just all blood stuff. All right. Now this is an interesting form of the blood gene because this blood snake or blood boa is hypo blood anery two. So what does the anery 2 gene do? The anerythristic gene type 2 removes the red. So here we got this snake that has tremendous red. We've removed a lot of the blacks, and then we take away the red. When it's born, it's like it looks like uh, it looks like a ghost, and that's it is a ghost, really. If you think about it. It's a ghost gene. It's the ghost, and the ghost is hypo with anery. We call a ghost. And then we put some blood into it and we call this the plasma because the plasma is the liquid portion of the blood. When you remove the red blood cells, that's a plasma boa. I actually have one. I have a female for sale if anyone's interested. It's actually ready to breed too. So this is my breeder girl and her daughter is ready to breed too. So look at that. That's hypo blood and also anery type two. And that's blood plus leopard. So it's a blood leopard. And you can see there's still a lot of darkness there because leopard and blood are both dark morphs. They have, they have red in them, but they're very dark too. So that's a blood leopard. And it's, uh, I, I love the, the, you see, leopard puts a lot of pattern in, into a snake. And blood, you know, adds a lot of red, obviously. So it really reddened up this. It's amazing how red it is considering they're both dark morphs too. So we can strip away some of that you know, darkness with maybe albino in there. That would be incredible. I don't believe anyone's produced a leopard blood albino yet. So, T negative albino that is. We're gonna go one step further and take a look at the leopard blood hypo and see what the hypo gene does now. Now this is one of the, um, the most red combinations of blood. This is a blood leopard hypo. So a hypo blood leopard. We know hypo bloods are really, really red. And then we know leopard, look at that. You got all that pattern from the leopard. Oh, she's, she's not happy. But you have that leopard pattern, but you also get the, the red from the leopard. And the hypo removes all the black or a lot of the black that the, that the leopard and blood would normally have. So this, this snake is really exquisite. Not happy, so I'm gonna leave her alone because I don't want her to like regurge her meal or anything like that because she's so stressed out. But that's a great combination. Beautiful. And this is one of my favorite combos. This is Paradigm Blood. So this is the Sharp Albino Gene, one copy, one copy of Bow Woman Caramel. They line up on the same allele and they produce the Paradigm, which is like a creamy looking albino. And then we add blood to that. I produced this male a number of years ago. He's been very good. He's been a great breeder for me. He just shed out. He's looking really, really nice. Look at that, look at that boy. And we'll put him into the breeding rotation this year as well. So. Gorgeous, gorgeous little boy. And it always comes back to the red dragons, right? The hypo albinos bloods. Obviously blood with albino, with the negative albino in it is, is gorgeous. Um, these snakes are really, really nice. Obviously the albino takes all the darkness out of the, the bloods. And bloods have a lot of black in them too. There's a lot of red in them, but there's a lot of black in them. So this is the call albino version of the blood albino. I'm gonna show you the sharp albino in a second. 
And here's the Sharp Albino blood version. So this is the Sharp Albino gene combined with a blood gene. And as you can see, this is an older adult. The other one's a little younger. They have different different type of look to them. The Sharp version versus the Carl Albino version. They're both beautiful. And when they get older, they all get like a little, the white turns a little bit yellow. And that's typical of all boas. As they get older, anyone who tells you they're gonna stay looking like um, with all that white in there is a liar. Unless you have found an azanthic gene you can get in there. And then of course you're gonna remove the red too, so that's not gonna work out too well. So beautiful looking little boy. He's breeding my uh, one of my squirrels here. So we'll leave them alone. This is one of my favorite combinations of blood. I mean, the, the color, this snake was exquisite when it was born and it's still exquisite, although it's gonna be going into shed here. This is a hypo T positive coming from the Honduran line, which is a very, very red thing to begin with. And it's a blood. So you got blood, Honduran T positive and hypo. We call this a Phoenix. The El Diablo would be the, the non hypo form of this. But the, when you add the hypo form, we call that the Phoenix. And it really does look red like a Phoenix. Uh, it looks like it's gonna flame up and just turn into something new, completely new, like the Phoenix does, renew itself. And hopefully this girl will breed for me this year. I produced her. I produced her from one of my Onyx breedings. I think I showed her to you a couple of videos ago. And man, if I can get some, some Onyx into this too, because Onyx is very red too. And she's so pretty. This, this blood gene, <laughs> blood with T positive and hypo, you can't get too much better than that. And, and this boa might be, have the most genes of any snake I have or own. This is a hypo onyx. Onyx, which is blood, I mean, which is uh, red. Hypo, onyx, Honduran T positive, blood. But why isn't, why isn't it fire engine red? Because it's got the anery 2 gene in it as well. This snake also, this was, this snake looked white when it was born. I'm telling you, white. Like, you would swear it was like, uh, it almost looked like a super fire. <laughs> Maybe not that white, but close. It was white looking. And then, of course, you know, bl blood gene browns out a little bit, but there's no red in there because the artery takes it away. And so we got this like really cool looking, weird looking snake with a million genes in it. So very, I've shown you this before. It's one of my favorite snakes because of the amount of genes it has. I want to breed, I can't wait to breed it. I'm hoping that it'll breed this year. Um, it's kind of close. Um, it might be a little too young. I might have to wait one more year, but we'll see. We'll see if there's any breeding action. If she shows any interest, I'll try to breed her. Once again, dwarf look, dwarf boa for sure. I would call the super dwarf, and uh, she's beautiful. She's really beautiful. Freak Nut, my friend, uh, who I got the onyxes from, he produced the. Um, he got lucky and didn't hit the uh, <laughs> the anery two gene. Sometimes it's cool to have some of them, but you want to hit like some visual bloods too without the anery gene. And it fire engine red, fire engine red. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. I hope you liked all the blood stuff that I showed you. I got a lot of blood combinations coming up this year. Also, if you're looking to pick up, get into the blood project and you want to contact me, I can give you some suggestions and ideas. I have a lot of blood stuff available still from uh, the past seasons. And there's a lot of different combinations you can get into. And some stuff I don't even have listed. So if you liked any of the things I was suggesting or putting out there, let me know. I can give some suggestions to you. There's ways to get in at a high level where you're going to spend more money, where you're going to get visuals. And then there's ways you can get in where you get hats. And that's, you know, every, there's, there's an entry level for everyone, depending on what your financial situation is and, and where you are. If I was young nowadays getting into the boa game, I didn't have a lot of money. I'd buy heads of everything because all I have is time on my hands. And so I would just take my time and make my own great stuff, right? And, and then it doesn't cost, it costs very little to do that. And you can make a lot more uh, in the end. Plus, the bottom line is the blood gene adds another color to the palette, to the painter's palette, as we say. Um, that only enables you to put more and more color into your boas. Um, you know, the great thing is too, when you combine, and I'll show you that, and I showed you this uh, in, in the collection, when you combine the blood gene with the anery gene, you, re you remove essentially the blood, the red color, the blood red color, and you produce what we call plasma, and you get a really nice gray steel looking snake. So there's so much potential with blood, it's untapped yet. If you guys are interested in getting in, once again, contact me. If you like what you see, hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications, hit the like button. We'll see you back Monday morning.